Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Wellbe Show and Podcast. I am very excited to have Hannah Bronfman, founder of HB Fit, author and content creator, and a very old family friend since we were very little with me today to tell an amazing story um, about her health and also just to you know share a lot of what she has experienced being in the wellness world as well. Hannah, thank you for being here. It's so nice to be here. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. So Hannah, there are so many things we could talk about on this interview, because as I said, you've been in the wellness world for uh, quite some time. HB Fit is really uh, focused on all things fitness and wellness lifestyle. So you have lots to share, um, as was your book. But specifically, there was a story that you told on one of your social media platforms and also just to me last time I saw you that really intrigued me about an experience with your mouth health and a biologic dentistry. And it really felt like something that was a real well be story to tell in that, uh, you know, you really discovered some root causes of symptoms that were uh, normally not seen as connected to mm-hmm. your mouth. Um, and I'd love to just have you tell that story because I think it was yeah. really incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So the dental journey that I've been on has definitely been um, full of emotional like ups and downs. And I never thought I was going to experience such like dental trauma, um, especially because I never had any cavities growing up, anything like that. But I got into a bike accident about six years ago, actually the day after my husband proposed to me. So I was a wee bit hungover, sure. And I was riding a city bike in New York City without a helmet, which I do not recommend. And maybe it was a mix between the fact that I was hungover, I was rushing to get somewhere. It was early in the morning. And I was also looking at this new very pretty ring on my finger, but I hit a pothole and I went flying over my handlebars and I landed um, on the concrete and basically on my face. And I ended up not breaking anything. I didn't break my nose. I didn't take off half my face. I didn't get hit by a car, but I did break my four front teeth. And the one of my one of my teeth took a 60 de- angle, a 60 degree angle back. And then the other three were fully chipped. And I like kind of split my lip open and kind of busted my chin up and my nose up. But other than that, I was totally fine. So that was like kind of like a, a moment in time. It was pretty traumatic. Like I, I ended up having to like wear a bandana for three weeks. So no scarring in the middle of the summer. It was like definitely not in my like summer plan, but like whatever, honestly, scarring was super minimal. And NYU had basically put some stuff in my teeth to make it feel like it was normal, but I had to wait to kind of do bonding or veneers or anything like that just by a couple of months, just because everything was still so like fragile. So fast forward a couple of years, I have now, like I did bonding. I, then I did veneers because six months before my wedding, one of my, like my front tooth started going black, terrible. So then I ended up having to get veneers, which was very expensive and not something I was anticipating right before my wedding, but that was like, kind of, that was cool. I got the veneers and then we were like settled for about three and a half years, four years. And then all of a sudden, um, now this is about two years ago, two and a half years ago, I am on my book tour for do what feels good. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm flying around. I'm definitely interacting with a lot of people on a daily basis. And, you know, I'm, definitely doing the most in terms of my lifestyle. I understand that like, you know, I can be burnt out from my adrenals, all of those things, but I started experiencing what I look back as now is like chronic fatigue. And, you know, m- my gut was working slower than, than normal. I was just, anytime I was sleeping, it wasn't proper sleep. Like I just, everything like wasn't really adding up. 
um, especially for someone who really listens to their body, um, has been in very fight or fight mode before and understand what to do to get myself to the parasympathetic and like how to kind of calm my nervous system. All the techniques that I have in my toolkit weren't really working. So that made me think something different is going on. So in order for me to um, kind of rule some things out and get to the bottom of, of, of some things, I took a blood test and sent it to a doctor who I, I really respect. And um, he's actually not located in New York and he, he it's a phone consultation. So I get on the phone with him. And we've spoken many times before. And I said, hey, you know, this is what I'm experiencing um, at a micro level, right? These are the things that my body's experiencing. This is how I feel. But then on a macro level, you know, I'm trying to conceive and I've been having problems with that. And, you know, I'm just wondering if you see anything abnormal. And he looked at my chart and he said, you know, it's so interesting. I've seen a case like this. And before I ask you anything about it, I'll tell you what happened. And I'm like, okay, cool. I don't know. So he's like, I treated a woman who was trying to get pregnant. And she was in her early thirties and she had a lot of off the chart, like strep bacterias in her mouth. And, um, I asked her if she ever experienced any dental trauma. And it turns out that she used to be a cheerleader. And when she was a senior in high school, one of her teeth was like knocked out. She, someone knocked her tooth out. So it ended up being that she had this infection in her mouth stemming from this old trauma to her, you know, her teeth. So he then says this story and I'm thinking, okay, this is really weird. So he says the next thing, you know, have you ever had any trauma to your mouth? And I'm like, well, actually four years ago, I got into a bike accident and broke my four front teeth. He's like, Okay. He said, you know, your mouth is a lot also, you know, your, your mouth is very representative of your reproductive system. And he said, I, I think you have a really major infection. And I, he's like, I won't know for certain, but I, these are the next steps I want you to take. So he said, there is a practice in uh, a dental practice in Austin, outside of Austin, Texas, that he wanted me to go see. And I thought to myself, what? Like I'm based in New York. Like that's so crazy. He said, listen, it's not that I don't trust people in New York. There are good people in New York. I can send you to, but the scan that I'm asking you to get people in New York don't know how to read it the way these people outside of Austin do. And I thought to myself, what does that even mean? He said, well, you know, you have to think about the dental industry, you know, the number one surgery that's performed amongst dental is a root canal. And that's like, you know, tried, true, doctors make money off of that. And like, that is like the way people go. But um, he wanted someone to read this scan whose objective was not just to go straight to root canals for a lot of reasons, but he felt that my infection could be so bad that a root canal actually wouldn't really even get to the root of the issue. And actually I had already had a root canal on one of my teeth, that one of my front four teeth. Uh, actually I'd, I had had a, a root canal probably just three months before speaking to this doctor which he obviously did not like to hear, okay? So then I thought to myself, okay, how am I gonna get to Austin? Turned out that I had a book event in Austin, Texas the next week. So if that wasn't a sign, I was like, okay. And the practice is called Nunnally, Freeman, and Owens. And they are located in Marble Falls, Texas, okay? So when I went to Austin the, the next week for my book event, I booked a car, the people at the dental, I think it's called like healthy smiles or something. Um, the people out there were amazing. They got me at the right time, everything. And I, and I went and I, and I got my scan and the woman comes back and the facility is beautiful. And she's showing me like the rooms where they do lymphatic drainage before any of their surgeries and how they use these like, you know, ozone, like injections of oxygen uh, to help dissipate any infections and just like 
a very holistic approach to, to oral care and that's something I had never experienced before living in New York. And she tells me, okay, I, I have your results from, from the, from the scan, by the way, this scan is called a 3d cone beam scan. Okay. So she's starting to read to me my, my results and she's showing me the photos and things. And it turns out that I have three massively infected teeth. Like the infection is kind of so intense that their recommendation is that I have these teeth extracted. I didn't really understand what that meant. So my immediate questions were, okay, which teeth are they? And what does that mean for my veneers? And she said, um, the teeth are your two canines and one of your front teeth, the one on the right, this guy. And that my veneers would have to come off because a veneer only works when it has an anchor tooth inside of it. I was just um, going to say they probably would need to put in a whole fake tooth, right? So, but because my veneers, you know, I'd spent so much money on my veneers and I was like, 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 what do you, so they were like, you know, your, your veneers got to go. And I was like, oh my God. And I like started crying hysterically. I was like, I, what, like what? And she, and she was like, you know what? Like, this is real. It's, it's, she's like, I totally get it. This is a lot. Like, these are your three front teeth. Like, this is not, you know, something in the back. Like, this is, I get it. And like, you know, she knows my profession, the whole thing. And so she was like, this is, you know, something I would really consider all of the things. And she said, but I, I can tell you that when I extract your teeth, we will get rid of this infection 100%. Whereas if I had just gotten root canals on the teeth, I would probably have to get multiple root canals considering I had already had a root canal on this tooth and this tooth was still infected, right? So it was kind of either go down the path of still having a hard time getting pregnant, root canals, and not really getting the, the root of the infection out, or get your three major teeth that are structurally holding up your face removed and pray to God that someone can cosmetically redo, you know, what needs to be done. So I spoke to the doctor who recommended everything after he spoke to the doctors there. Um, he agreed with their diagnosis and, next steps. So my husband took me a month later to Austin and we went to Marble Falls and I had my three teeth extracted. They put me under like just barely like what I, I think it's like nitrous oxide. I don't know. I was fully, like like, gas? A, a, no? I, I don't know if it was, I think it was more than laughing gas because I like don't remember but I apparently was asking for photographs of everything that they were taking out. So the next morning when I came back to review, she was like, okay, now we'll go through all the photos that we took at your request. And I was like, pardon me? And she was like, yeah, you um, asked to see like all of like the matter and the teeth and the root and in detail. And I was like, Oh, okay. Uh, so I saw all of that. And so, and all of that was sent off to pathology. Right. And so when I got the results of that, um, I had 23 different types of bacteria that were off the charts infected. And four of those bacterias were the same bacterias that were found in my father-in-law's throat cancer. So um, I'm actually very glad that I got my teeth extracted, although it was very like emotionally traumatizing. Um, and it actually doing it with this practice in uh, outside of Austin, Texas was much more affordable than anything that anyone in New York was telling me, whether, you know, especially anyone in New York, first of all, 
thought I was absolutely insane for getting my teeth extracted. In fact, I had multiple people calling me, advising me against doing this, whose opinion I never asked for. And it's, you know, when you share your life on social media, that's what happens. Um, but I did tons of research. You know, I read, uh, I read this book called The Hidden Epidemic by a doctor named Levy, Howard Levy or Robert Levy, a cardiologist, and linking a lot of heart and mouth situation. Um, then I watched a documentary called The Root Cause, which was taken off of Netflix. Uh, and you can find it on YouTube. You have to pay like $2 to watch it or something. And the reason why I was taken off Netflix is because it was uh, taken down by the ADA, the American Dental Association, which, by the way, Nunnally, Freemans, and Owens are a part of the ADA, right? They are part of that association. Yet they are on the other side of the thinking that, you know, that dentistry is a part of your entire body that your teeth are living organisms, that what happens in your mouth speaks to the rest of your body, including your, your heart, your reproductive. Um, you know, the, the, the tongue really controls most of the muscles in your body. I, it's funny, as I have a baby, you know, watching a baby learn how to move, if a baby's having any sort of neck or tongue issues, it really affects their entire body. Um, it's the, the tongue and the neck and the throat are the alignment of a of, of body development. And it's just been kind of amazing to be someone who's, you know, loves to explore all the different types of everything there is in wellness, whether it's, you know, a, a, a certain lifestyle, di a dietary or whatever, like you and I both have this love for, for knowledge and health. And so to discover a, a, a whole part of my health journey that I hadn't really paid so much attention to, you know, oral health really, um, Sure, it's something we're taught as children, brush your teeth, brush your teeth, brush your teeth. But we don't, you know, it's always kind of in the medical world and, and how we view it, it's seen as like a separate kind of thing than your regular checkup to see how the rest of your body's doing. Like dentistry oh, is yeah. like, yeah, it's like it's on an island over here, but it's very much connected to your overall well-being. Um, and that's really what I learned through this experience. And and six months later, after my surgery, I retested and I had zero infection left in my body. And I uh, got pregnant nine months after the, the surgery that I had. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's one did of your, those things. Did your chronic fatigue type symptoms also go away? Would you say? They did. Absolutely. In fact, I could say that almost immediately I felt better. And it really wasn't until the end of my book tour that uh, I started to really feel good, like really great again. But right immediately after also, because they did lymph lymphatic drainage on me before and after my extractions, I was on a plane the next day going to a book event in DC and I was totally fine. And the, the, the amazing cosmetic guy at the practice modeled my temp bridge off of my veneers so I left there with a full grill that was temporary but temporary like for six months like not temporary for a week like you right. know like, like livable temporary yeah yes livable yeah. and then and then as I finished out my dental journey I, I found a guy in the city who would again make me these permanent bridges but I really did not want to go the route of implants because you know what I, enough with my gums and the things going in and out of them. I'm good. I'd rather just like a bridge. And I'm, you know, I'm chilling. Like it's fine. Uh, I, I feel like it was like a very emotional situation. I just wanted to just be as kind of as least invasive um, and swift as possible to kind of close the chapter on. Especially like getting pregnant or maybe already being pregnant, like any major surgery or drilling into your gums like yeah you know that's 
going to cause some inflammation, some potential for more infection, more, you know, just more stuff you might have to worry about versus like, if you can handle it, just doing the bridges. Like I, I totally get that. I'm, I'm yeah. Anything going into your body like that, it's, it's emotional, like any kind yeah. of piercing of skin and blood and all of that. Um, if you don't absolutely have to do it, I, I, I see why you did that. Well, that's an incredible story. I was going to ask you how you came to possibly think of this when I first heard you tell me the story. Um, but now it makes a lot more sense, but you know, you think about how many people tell their symptom or their issue to a doctor who has no familiarity with something like this. And it's just so lucky that this doctor had a case similar to yours and could say, you know, did this happen to you? It just goes to show you like you can be very trained as an MD and you know triple board certified and, and all this stuff or any other kind of health practitioner. But if you don't have enough different kinds of experiences um, and aren't, you know, open-minded to like things that might work outside of your purview, it's hard to then help other people like you to think outside the box to be like, have you ever, you know, cause yeah, that's all it takes to potentially solve something that seemed very random. And yet so few healthcare conversations go that way. Um, 100%. And like you said, it's like the most recommended, most normal, most, you know, ka thing to do would be more root canals or, um, oh, let's do some antibiotics, see if it gets in. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And then the next thing, you know, you're wiping out so much good bacteria Meanwhile, you're trying to get pregnant. Say you did, then that affects your baby's microbiome. Like there's just oh my god, the whole so thing. many the cascade of events that can go from that. Yeah, um, or another root canal causes yet another infection in a different right. tooth or whatever. So I just I feel like that's incredible. It's so lucky, but also I'm hoping this story being told on the show helps other people to think outside the box a little bit if they're having yeah. any kind of chronic fatigue symptoms or infertility or just things they can't really explain that are seemingly random. Yeah. But are actually very connected. Totally. Um, And also not to underestimate how debilitating these self infections can be that aren't necessarily taking you down the way like E. coli would, but right. Or like, or like the flu or something, but how that like those chronic small things add up and really kind of like take you out in a way that uh, you don't necessarily recognize because it's like, you're not so unproductive that you're like, but all of a sudden you're so foggy and you're like, what's happening. Yeah. And you see that so much with chronic Lyme, which I had an actual chronic fatigue syndrome, like CFS and then um, mold toxicity. I've had a very couple of good friends struggle with infertility only to discover they were living with toxic mold in their home. Oh my goodness. Same kind of thing where it was like, they were still able to go to work, but it was this like over time, doesn't feel right, but also like, I can't quite tell what's wrong. And, you know, I always go to, I'm sort of obsessive about root cause analysis or root cause resolution. But in in this case, you know, how many things might've been done to you before discovering this root cause or maybe never discovering this root cause, which have led to so many other health issues down the road. And most of all, like you said, your father-in-law, you know, having throat cancer and like over time, this bacteria being allowed to replicate. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, a lifetime later, you're wondering how this happened. And you've got some really horrendous diagnosis, which 100% not only would potentially kill you and be catastrophic for your life, but also from a cost perspective, you're thinking, you know, veneers cost so much or like this extraction costs a lot, but like, what does cancer cost? You know, it's like a whole um, different perspective and how you think about it or piecing together many other kinds of procedures they might've done to you over several years or decades. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so I just think it's, it's such a good, I don't want to say cautionary tale, but it's just such an eye opening experience that I wanted Mm -hmm. to have you share because, you know, and this is also somebody, like you said, you know, so much, you knew so much before this about what to do for different chronic health issues. You had a great toolbox. 
Um, and still you didn't, you know, think of this necessarily. So there's all these frontiers of yeah. health exactly. that are less known that yeah. I think, especially the, the gut mouth connection and the, the mouth microbiome and dental trauma and all of that is going to become a lot more, I hope a lot more, I don't want to say mainstream because that's probably not the right word, but just there's going to be more awareness of it, I think. Yeah, in absolutely. Next five years or so. Yeah, it'll definitely be kind of like the next place that people will focus on. You know, I feel like people have spent a lot of time on mental health and like, you know, everyone's talking about the microbiome and the oral health and your mouth is going to be a, a big, it's funny because so many like brands have like come out recently, but I feel like it's not, it's still early. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. That's why I think like the terms dental trauma, holistic dentistry, biologic dentistry, they're all like, it's yeah, totally unfamiliar to people. Totally. And most people, if I've ever mentioned it are like, what the heck is really the difference? And I think, I mean, as you said, the real main difference is somebody who understands the mouth, the connection per- between the mouth. As it pertains to the rest of your body. Exactly. I think it was actually um, the cardiologist in his book that, you know, made the comparison, like, you know, when a tooth dies in your mouth or like when they say like the root dies, like that's when you get a a root canal, right? But like if your finger died, you wouldn't leave it on your body. It would like rot and like have an infection that would go to the rest of your body. Like you, you cut it off. And so like to think that you don't do that in your mouth is kind of bizarre. Right. Or why would you want to leave anything rotting? Even if you Any, cleaned it right. out, it's, it's I know. dead. Like, I know. I, yeah. Once this is a bit more mainstream or more attention is paid to it, I think a lot of people will all of a sudden be like, huh, I've been thinking about this in such a weird way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Great. Well, this was so interesting. Like you said, you got pregnant, but you know, your health, especially during your pregnancy and postpartum, you feel like, it was changed because of this procedure, right? Like this was really helpful. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Not only did like my micro symptoms dissipate, but the macro situation of my infertility also changed. So like all around win-win. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm so happy to hear it. I'm so happy that that resolved itself well. Because me too. You know, Thank unfortunately, you. in my line of work, there's just so many people. There are just so many people who come to me, or you know, get on a social media platform I'm on and tell me that you know they've been sick when they don't understand what are all these different things they're dealing with for like 12 years, 15 years. I mean, just goes on forever, and the number of yeah. like biopsies and tests and this and that, that they've had done as a result. You're just like, if one person you had told this, you know, you had talked to could offer something like what was explained to you as a potential cause, like how different their whole last yeah. years would have been or something like that. So oh, I know, thank you very much for sharing this story. I really of hope course. it um, opens a lot of people's eyes to this part of um, not just health, but microbiome health, which is such a focus, yeah. um, at Wellbe. Yeah. And, um, I will definitely share those, the, the documentary, even if it's only on YouTube now and, yeah. and um, the book the book and, the, and the practice in, in Austin. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, Hannah. Well, um, it was so thank good you to see again. you. And yeah, of course, um, thank obviously you. tell the Wellbe community where else they can find you if they don't already know who you yeah, are. Yeah, sure. If if you uh if you don't follow me, go go ahead and do that on, on Instagram. I'm at Hannah Bronfman. You can also follow uh my wellness company at HB Fit. We have newsletters for HB Fit, and I have a bi-monthly newsletter called Hannah's List that uh, you can subscribe to with my link in bio on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you again, guys. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.